and welcome to What I Wish I Knew, um, a student panel series. Tonight is the college student panel. As you can see on the screen, we have several other upcoming panels. Um, this event was something that was the idea of our teen advisory board. Each library in Howard County has a teen advisory board and um, they're called tab groups and our teen advisory board thought it would be a great idea for students to share their wisdom with some of their younger peers. And we wanted to start off with college students because we know you guys are going back to school, might be back in school, but hopefully we wanted to get to you before you got too busy. So that's what we're doing tonight. And then as you can see on March 15th, we are gonna have um, high school students talk to students who are younger than them, ninth and 10th graders. And then on April 19th, high schoolers will talk to middle school students. So tonight's agenda, um, after our, my brief welcome, um, I'm just gonna go through a few upcoming events here at Miller. And then I'm gonna introduce our moderator who so graciously all, um, agreed to moderate this evening's event. Then we'll have the introduction of our panelists and we'll start questions. Our tab group decided to come up with a list of questions that they thought high schoolers would most likely wanna know about college students. So we have a list of nine questions that our moderator will post to our college students and they'll answer the students, they'll answer the questions and share their wisdom. And then after that, we're gonna allow the audience to answer questions as well. Um, then we'll close our event. Um, and if you have any questions or concerns, you can certainly email me at the library. Um, my email address is cheryl.grimes at hclibrary.org. I'll drop that in the chat later. So some of our upcoming events at the library on Wednesday, tomorrow, we have a wonderful event. It's a creative letter writing event. Again, this is an event that is, has been created by our teen advisory board. And we're gonna have two teenagers from that teen advisory board who are gonna lead that event. Um, one student from Centennial and the other young lady is from Marriott's Ridge. And so all supplies are gonna be, um, are gonna be here for you. Just come enjoy some old fashioned communication. Then on Thursday, for students um, ages nine through 12, we have Lego Wars. This is something that the library did before the pandemic and we're finally bringing it back. Um, both of these events require registration. The letter writing event, we welcome drop-ins, but the Lego Wars event requires registration. And then last next week on Monday, the school day, um, the school day out, all the students are off that day. We have a STEM event that's hosted by a robotics club at Centennial. Um, and it's for ages five to 14. That requires registration and space is permitted. So register as soon as you can. And I'll also put our website at the bottom so you know where to register. And last but not least, I just wanna let you know that whenever you see this logo on one of our flyers, this means that it's a class or a program that was created by our teen advisory board. We really value the information that we get from teens. If you're interested in the teen advisory board, certainly feel free to reach out to me. Um, you can look at our website and just type in tab in the, um, in the, in, the, in the box that allows you to look for events and you'll find tab meetings at various libraries. But if Miller is your home branch, we would love to have you in our tab group. So with no further ado, we wanna jump in. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Zoom always works until it does not. There we go. And I'm so happy to have everyone here. We have 62 people on this call. That certainly tells you how important this event is and how much the community really wants to hear from our college students. If it looks like I'm in the dark, that's because the library also values energy conservation and my lights turn off if I'm not walking around in my room. So I'm not truly in the dark. I can certainly see you guys. Um, so what I would love to do is to thank 
two people quickly before we go any further is first Carmen Jessup. She is the teen, um, the teen advice, the, <laughs> the teen instructor and research specialist at the East Columbia branch. Um, she has been so wonderful and she wanted, she offered to be my producer today. Carmen, you wanna unmute your mic and just say hi. Hi, thank you, Carol. Um, it's so wonderful to be here uh, as somebody who has gone to college and um, know, and I know firsthand how overwhelming that can be. Um, I really appreciate um, all of you being here, sharing your knowledge and also um, for the participants for uh, taking those steps to um, get as much information ahead of time. Um, I think that's wonderful. Absolutely, thank you. And then I just wanna introduce as we start off this um, evening together, our moderator. So we have a wonderful moderator with us um, this evening and she is a student from Centennial High School she is a junior at Centennial High School and her name is Shreya Reddy. Shreya is a member of our teen advisory board here at Miller and she is gonna moderate the questions this evening with our college board. Shreya, I'm gonna hand over the mic to you. All right, hi everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Um, so I'm gonna honestly just jump in, but before we do, I just wanna say thank you everyone for taking the time out of your day to be here with us and especially to our panel because they have put in a lot of time and effort um, to be here today. So um, really quickly, um, I want the panelists to introduce themselves. So the name, the high school they go to, the college they're at, the major that they currently have and the year that they're in, um, just so that we have a quick introduction and I'll start with the questions. And maybe what we could do is we can go alphabetically in order of your first name. So Brooke, I think that would be you. Yes, hello everyone. My name is Brooke Foyles. I attended Mount Hebron High School when I was class of 2020. Um, I'm now class of 24 at the illustrious Morgan State University, majoring in health education on the pre-professional physical therapy track. And yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. Go Bears. Hi, my name is Judy and I went to Centennial High School. I'm currently at University of Maryland and I'm a sophomore and I'm majoring in computer science and math. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Julian Amaya. Um, apologies for my camera being off. I am a, I went to uh, Mount Hebron High School. I graduated 2020. Um, I'm currently a sophomore economics major at Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia. Hi, uh, my name is Noni Grimes. I graduated from Centennial High School in 2020 and I am majoring in film and television at New York University. Hello, my name is Mazan. I went to Mount Hebron High School. I graduated in 2019, and I'm currently going to the University of East London in London, and I'm finishing up my last year, my third year in biomedical science. Hi, I'm Rashma Jasmine. Um, I graduated from Centennial in 2020. I go to the University of Maryland College Park. I'm a sophomore and I'm a neuroscience and English major. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Shamani Poletti. I graduated from Centennial High School in 2019 and I go to University of Maryland College Park currently. I am a junior majoring, double majoring in operations management and business analytics and information systems. Thank you for having me today. Okay, it's lovely meeting all of you. Um, for everyone currently watching, uh, we are really open to any questions that you guys may have. So if you have any, feel free to type them in the chat box to either me or Ms. Grimes. And towards the end of the um, meeting for the last 30 minutes, we will be dedicating some time to answering your questions. So um, feel free to type your question in, or if you'd like to um, turn on your mic and announce that, feel free to also just type your name and we will make sure to call on you towards the end. 
So um, I don't want to waste any of your time. So I'm going to just jump in with the questions. So our first question for you guys is what are some of the not so obvious things or like activities that you guys participated in that helped you get into college? Anyone can jump in or if you guys want, you can like type something in the chat and we'll make sure to call on you. Um, I'll start. So I think one of the things that's not like, um, you know, volunteering or your personal statement or your GPA or SAT is getting in contact with the Dean of Admissions of the school that you want to go to or the schools you want to go to, into because getting your name, um, just them knowing your name when they see your application, like, oh, okay, like I know this person, um, we've been emailing um, and we've been in contact. So it just makes it, um, it will definitely help you like in getting in college because the demon of admissions will know your name. So yeah, that's what I'd say would be something that's not so obvious. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Does anyone else wanna share some insight that they might have? Uh, I suppose going into like the school events that they may have for high schoolers, I know that uh, the business school has like these like these summer programs for high schoolers that you can sign up to and you know I think there's an application process or something. But you know you get in contact with the dean of the school or something and you know you make connections and network and you have like somewhat of a head up to other students because you already know what the school is going to be like. Yeah, and to um, piggyback off of that, also making sure that um, when they when you can get to the school that they know your face, because I know for me, um, when I was considering Morgan, I was considering the Honors College. Um, I went down to the Honors College in person, um, and this was before COVID, and I actually got to know the Honors College advisor so that, say, for example, if more money were to come about or just to know the people in, like, some of the older people in the other cohorts or just know people in my cohort. I would say something that's kind of, like, underrated. It is, like, obvious that you want to be doing like leadership activities and clubs are definitely a great way to do that. But it's actually really easy to tell when someone is like, uh, mind the language BSing versus when someone is being authentic. So I would say like, be a part of something or like try and find activities that you actually care about or are passionate about because in what whatever like essays you write or if you have interviews, people can see that you actually care about what you're doing. And also if you care about the activity that you're joining, you're more likely to like seek out leadership opportunities because you wanna give your all to whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. Yeah, admissions is really like good at, you know, sniffing out which one is VS and which one's not. These days, especially, because you can just search up the candidate to see if they actually did it or not. To piggyback off of what Reshma said, um, if you already know what you want to kind of go into, you could try and find some research opportunities out there. Like if you're a bio major, sometimes they'll have under or high school level research um, help that you can go into and help out with. Um, but that's if you already kind of know what type of major that you're looking for. But it does look amazing on your uh, admissions application because it shows that you already are going to go into college really caring about what you're going to be doing there. I would say. Um, Piggy, backing off of that, your friend's parents can be a valuable resource in terms of like, you know, getting those research opportunities and stuff. Because I know a person uh, who reached out to her friend's mom who was a doctor somewhere. And she asked to shadow the doctor for like two weeks over the summer. And now she's in like the Pittsburgh Medical School program like, you know, like they do like the seven year program thing, she's in that. So that like, that's a valuable activity you can talk about in your essays and stuff. Okay, yeah, thank you guys so much for sharing. That was like a great answer and I'm sure that was really beneficial. Um, I'm gonna jump right into the second question. Um, so what is like the single most valuable activity that you guys did in high school that really helped with your application? And is there something you recommend with that? 
Um, I can start us off. I had an internship my senior year of high school uh, as a marketing intern and as a business major that like gave me a step up in getting into the business school and at UMD. I can say I was um, the president of Alpha Achievers my senior year and I dedicated a lot of time and effort into it. So it looked really good because I could just talk about that for a really long time. And I just had a lot of um, connections as well. I know for me, I was in the Elijah Cummings Youth Program, which was a two year um, intensive program. And with that, the schools that I applied to, my recommender who was Congressman Cummings, he ended up going to those schools like in the past. So that really helped and people are like, oh my gosh, like you're his legacy and all that stuff. Um, what, um, sorry, not good. Um, so um, my, my main uh, activities was band and it wasn't really related to my major, but it really helped um, kind of stand out to the, to the, like in the application because I was really passionate about um, what I did. And, um, and I'm currently still in marching band at Maryland, which is really fun. Um, but the academic related um, thing I had was interning at the applied physics lab. And I was working on like software engineering. Um, and I think that also helped with the application. Um, for me, my senior year, I was the president of Delta Scholars. And I wasn't into like sports and things like that. So I did lots of clubs. Um, I did, I think it was the, I can't even remember. I think it was the African-American society. And then outside of school, I was also in another um, Delta affiliated like um, volunteering club. And then I was also in Girl Scouts. And then academic wise, I did, um, a summer shadowing with a pediatric surgeon, which really helped my application um, because it showed that I was interested in become like in medicine. And, and since I went to do biomedical science or a biomedical degree, bi biology degree, um, it really helped me um, in my application. I think for me, uh, the most important thing I did was probably the club I ended up starting in sophomore year. Um, it was a community service club that specialized in uh, collecting feminine hygiene products for uh, to donate to various homeless shelters in Maryland. And I think that in addition to that, just being um, a good community service activity and leadership opportunity, I think that college is like seeing initiative being taken. So I think you don't necessarily have to start something, but if you see a vacancy at your school, I definitely say go for it. And then also, this isn't really an activity, but it was a class, my studio art class, I think for my major, it was really important that I have a strong portfolio and that gave me the time and the space to do that. Um, similar to Noni, like I'd say the single most valuable thing that I did was start a club also in my sophomore year. Um, it was like, it was tricky because I wasn't quite the like original co-founder, but I saw that like the people that were trying to start the club just didn't do anything. And sometimes it's important to step up, even if it's not necessary, like not necessarily your place to, because if you're passionate about starting something and the people that are supposed to be doing that aren't, you can take initiative. And to this day, there is an American Cancer Society at Centennial High School. It's, um, it's also really fulfilling afterwards because I still follow them on Instagram. So I get to see little updates and I'm like, wow, they're still meeting. Like I barely had any members my first year and now it's still there. Oh, and I um also to add something else as somebody else who did start a club in their sophomore year, I didn't realize how many of us, you know, started stuff in our sophomore years. Um, I started with the wonderful Miss Grimes. Um, it was Black Student Union, and that opened a lot of doors for me. Um, and I know that this may sound like, oh, you have to be like really invested in this or start this, but it's more or less like what someone else said earlier, when you're really passionate about it, then people see that passion and be willing to like bring you up. Because I didn't know from like the Black Student Union, now that I'm at the Maryland State Conference level for the NAACP, like overseeing youth oversight. So it's just like small stuff, like even the smallest impact can like 
really roll into like a big position or also help you out in school or help you with different positions or get to know people that can help to elevate you when it comes to your college experience or your application process. To add on to that. Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Go oh, sorry. Ahead. Yeah. Um, I was just going to say also being in Howard County, um, one thing that I got involved with, which uh, involved with, which, uh, sorry, one thing I got involved with was HCAST. And that was a really, um, I put that down. And then also I was um, represented to the Board of Education. So getting involved with SGA, that's like a really good thing. And you don't have to run for it. For me, the rep to the Board of Education, that was a appointed position. So getting associated with your SGA advisor, that could be of, of assistance to somebody. Yeah, sorry to have cut you off, but those are all really great responses. Um, we're really appreciative for that as well. Um, our third question for you guys is, what are some things you wish you knew about the application process, like the college application process, before your senior year that you think would be beneficial? There's a lot of writing. There's like you think that there's like an essay you can use for like everything because there's like a common app, but even on the common application, there's like so many short essays. So um, start early. Uh, and also start like the personal essays early because you're gonna need more than one. Yeah, I wanted to add on to that because there is a lot of writing. So what I did is I made a giant document with all like my short essays, my long, because I only did two like personal essays and you have to frame them, like I say, from two different perspectives. One where like you were defeated and one where you triumph because you don't, you want to know like what the college is asking um, to set up, like put all your schools in like Common App, all that stuff early. And also you don't have to pay for college applications it's really easy to get waivers for college applications, sending your test scores. You just have to ask your counselor. And um, if your counselor is like, well, you know, but just explain to them, like, you know, maybe you don't have the money personally, or just kind of explain to them how it's really important, or you have these goals. Um, because honestly, you don't have to pay for most of the stuff in the college application process if you really just like try hard enough and say not the right things to the right people, but, you know, saying the right stuff so that people understand that you're really in this. Um, yeah, a bit different than what they're saying about like the personal statements and the essays and things like that. There are a lot of things um, to write, but I think the biggest, um, like the biggest thing that I didn't know about the application process was that international schools was an option because I don't think a lot of people talk about like um, going abroad and studying abroad internationally. They usually talk about, oh, just do like a semester or, um, you know, yeah, like a semester or a few semesters. But no one really talks about the fact that you can actually live in another country and study there full time. So I think that was like the biggest thing that I didn't know. I wish I would have known it sooner so that I would have been more prepared when it came to like the application process because it's like a bit different. Okay, I don't want to fill the silence. Um, so I mean, you guys had some really great insight and it's quite funny, like the next few questions that we had were something you guys touched on. So I guess like going off of like the college applications branch, when do you guys think is a good time to really get started on college applications? Um, if I could jump in, I started, like I had an idea of where I wanted to apply like the summer before, or, you know, the summer, like at the start of the summer after the end of the you know, like, junior year. I worked on my like personal, like my personal essay over the summer. And, you know, um, I think, if you're in English honors, I know at Centennial that they work at, like work on your essays like the first two quarters or something for the first quarter or something. Like I polished up my essay there while also like getting other people to read it. Uh, then you know I applied to my colleges. It wasn't for me. It wasn't it wasn't really stressful. It was like go with the flow. But I took the time during the summer to like get my head straight in order to like figure out what I needed and what I wanted for my colleges. 
I'll probably say I'm, um, get started like right away for looking for colleges. I um I also started my essay in the summer before senior year. Um, a thing to note is that there's like different deadlines based on how you're applying. So some some schools have like early application or early decision or priority registration or whatever. And I would say try to get into those because I only found out after getting into college, but like. I go to the University of Maryland and I'm in the scholars program. And I didn't find this out until like my friend was talking to her boyfriend's little brother, but apparently you can only get into the scholars program at UMD if you applied early. So like people that apply later are not even in the selection process for those kind of programs. So um, that said, I would say like, if it's, if it's like a college you're looking into and you want to get into these like higher programs or things that could like be helpful some stuff that you probably don't even know about while you're applying um try to go for the earlier deadlines it's also nice because then you don't have to be like applying for colleges over winter break like other people that are suffering i know for me um I kept on telling myself that I was going to work over the summer to write um, my essays. And I wanted to have everything done super soon and I procrastinated so hard. Um, I barely did anything over the summer. Uh, the only thing I did do over the summer, I think, was to start thinking about what I, some potential topics for my, uh, for my personal essay, for my core personal essay. And I wrote down like a brainstorm of a huge list of ideas. And I ended up writing the majority of my, uh, my personal essays after that uh, that lesson and I think the first two quarters of my English class. And honestly, I, I feel like I, even though I think it would have probably been less stressful if I started earlier, I can't imagine what my essays would have been like if I didn't have that help because it was really valuable. I think I had a really good teacher. I ended up getting really good feedback. And I think the lessons I learned in that quarter are just like, yeah, <laughs> just ended up really helping me write some really valuable essays. And so I think honestly, it just really depends on how you work, uh, what resources you want to have available, and of course, your personal deadlines. Um, well, I, I can't even remember <laughs> when I started looking at the application process because I feel like it was so long ago, even though it wasn't that long ago. Um, but for me, I definitely do remember procrastinating. Like I did not start when I was supposed to, but I think the biggest takeaway from that is to not procrastinate and to start um, as early as possible. And definitely, as they were saying, because um, different schools have different deadlines. So figure out the deadlines, figure out where you wanna go and then go from there. So give yourself like a few months of cushion room at least to like, um, you know, do your essay and just organize your plan when it comes to the application process. So you're not like stuck trying to figure out, you know, last minute things. I think on top of like figuring out which schools you can apply to, you should also think about which essays you can use for which schools, depending on what they look for. Uh, some schools really don't prefer like you praising yourself and like, you know, like, you know, making yourself seem better or something because they want to have like, see you struggle and like overcome it. So it depends on like, uh, it depends on which school you apply to on and how many essays you'll write depending on what they want. Okay, um, if nobody else wants to talk to that, um, I guess like going off, I think Brooke mentioned something about how she organized her different applications. So I guess the question for the rest of you is how, like, what was the main method you guys used to organize your college applications? So like documents, spreadsheets, um, there's many different things, but what particularly, particularly did you use that really helped you out? I found um, for me personally, Excel spreadsheets were 
uh, really good. Um, so I would have like the name of the college or like something about um, or the just the the uh, college application I wanted to do and then like the deadline and I think um, the day that I wanted it to be done by. Um, and then I would have a link to the specific like documents that I was working with it. So like the folder, or something of that nature. Yeah. I think like in addition, um, I also made like, like a safety and match and a reach list to make sure that um, I just have like enough for each category. And to organize the essays, I kind of organize them by deadlines. So like for each document, um, I would title that like um, that, 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 that deadline um, since each college have pretty similar deadlines. I was gonna um, add on to what I said earlier cause it's funny cause I'm looking directly at like, I had like a giant um, like writing on like tear away paper board that I used to like organize and still like right here. Um, but in addition, like I use docs for like a couple of things. So like I have one title like essays and one that says supplemental essays, just so I can like, you know, differentiate between my actual college essays and the other one. Um, and then I also had like a regular colleges where I put my entire list um, because I do want to like let people know, like you don't have to have your list narrowed down. I just kind of threw a list out there and then looked at like the requirements, such as like price, if they had my major, how, what was their graduation rate? Um, different stuff like that and then at the bottom I did have like application dates like when they were due and if I was applying to like rolling um, so it's kind of like a lot of different google docs but I usually just kept them open and have them rotating as well as like what schools gave me like waivers because waivers are important as well if people didn't know like you can get a waiver to apply to a school for free um, if you just really put yourself out there and they'll send you like a ton of them I um, um oh go ahead Oh, okay. Sorry. Thanks. <laughs> um, for me, I, I was not organized when I was in high school. So I was not making like a spreadsheet and like a word doc and things like that. Um, but now I am because I'm applying for my master's program. So I'm doing like a full on spreadsheet. So it's like, um, researching the schools that you want to go to, making sure they have your major, because some schools don't have your major. Um, so the major, the price of the application fee, the price of tuition, which is important, um, and the email of the admissions counselor so that you can email them and get in contact with them. So that's my spreadsheet now. I think that's really um, helping me. Um, so I also had like a really similar um, Excel sheet. Actually, I think it was like Google, uh, the Google Sheets. Um, but I also, in my neuroticism, I also had like a really intricate system of folders in my Google Drive. And oh God, they were like, the first folder was like, um, college applications and then underneath that was like dead like large deadlines so there was like November December January oh October November December January and then in each of those folders were the different colleges but then in my like first large folder there was also a large um google doc so I had individual documents for all of my essays but I also had like a master doc where I put all of the questions and like copy and pasted all of the essays. And that is helpful because a lot of questions are similar and you can just like tweak some of your short essays or like expand on some of your other essays to like make it work for multiple applications. Um, you know what they say, kids work smarter, not harder. I'm just adding on to what Rashma said. I think I, <laughs> I had a really similar system. <laughs> And then also, um, I also had a spreadsheet that uh, I called essay search when I needed to write a new essay. I had a spreadsheet basically detailing all the essays I'd already written. And I had a column that said category. And so it basically like boiled the, down the question it asked into like a category. So like 
why film or like academics or service or art. And so if I had a question, I could look at what themes were in it and I could find the essay that already talked about it in it and then see what parts I can pull from that and then adjust. And so, yeah. Yeah, I think all the systems that you guys used were excellent since you guys clearly got into college and things like that. So thank you for that little bit of insight. Um, I guess our next question for you is, um, a lot of students right now are having trouble finding like colleges and majors. So do any of you have tips for how you can like look into certain colleges and majors or any websites that you recommend? In terms of finding a college, I guess it depends on what type of college do you want to go to? Like, if you, uh, like you know, <laughs> if you want to go to a party school, you have to figure out which party school you want to go to. If you want to go to like a non-party school, um, what school do you want to go to? Like, it depends on what type of college you want and what kind of experience of, from that college you want. Uh, in terms of, oh, you want to go ahead, Reggie? Uh, in terms of finding a major, for me, I chose economics because I looked at the larger thing I wanted to do, which is to be a lawyer. And then I broke it down and said, okay, well, what type of majors would I need to, you know, get into that field? And then from that, like, uh, breakdown, I chose um, the major that I felt I, I uh, took two economics classes in high school, so I already had like a little bit of a love for it. So then I was like, okay, I do see myself doing this specific type of major. So that's why I chose econ. Um, but also your major might change during uh, college as well. So keep that in mind. Yeah, um, let me tell you, cause my major was nursing. I was sold on nursing. I took a CNA course. I was like, yup, nursing, that's me. And then literally last semester, I was like, mm, maybe physical therapy. So like really when you weigh something, weigh like if you're doing it for you or for your parents or for your guardian, and then also weigh where it's gonna get you in life and like how you see yourself ascending in that position. Cause at least I know for me, like I chose nursing. I was like, oh yeah, like I love healthcare. Like I love people. And I was like, yeah, I can see myself doing this. But then I was like, oh, but I really like physical therapy. Like that's my long-term goal. Like I can see myself going to the Olympics with physical therapy. Like, like dream big because you'll always land somewhere, especially um, with a college degree. Like you can always either do like con continuing education classes, but just make sure that when you're choosing that major and that school for that major, that like you have the kind of like the room just in case you did want to change or like you did want to have a fail save for me um choosing a school was just it went all over the place because originally i was Ms. on your muted sorry yeah sorry <laughs> originally um for me, I really wanted to go to an HBCU. Like I was like, cause my brother went to Spelman, my, not my brother went to Spelman, my brother went to Xavier. And I was like, oh, okay, I wanna go to Xavier. And then I was like, okay, well then I'm really interested in Spelman. And then I went to Spelman's junior day, my junior year where they have like a bunch of high school juniors um, come and visit the school and like, you know, see what the school is and see if you're interested. And then I realized that I wasn't interested in that. And I wasn't really interested in going to an HBCU. So then I started looking into um, international schools. And then I went like all over. I did London, I did um, Scotland, Dublin, um, Australia. And then I kind of narrowed it down to London because I was like, okay, well, Australia is really far and the wildlife is just not for me. So I was like, Australia is just not a good match for me. And then um, Scotland, it was like, and Ireland was just a bit too, like, it wasn't city enough for me. So then I narrowed it down to London. Um, so yeah, my choosing a university just went all over the place, but I really like the place I'm at now. And when it comes to choosing a major, I always wanted to be like a science major. So 
I really enjoyed biology. Biology was my favorite subject in school. Um, at first I wanted to do, so I wanted to do a biology major, but then I was like, well, there must be other things, other science majors besides biology. I know I didn't like chemistry, so that was not an option for me or physics. So those are options for me. But um, in terms of biology, like there's like microbiology, biomedical science, and there's also biochemistry, which I've come to love now. Um, so then from there, I went, I was interested in biomedical engineering. But that was more like my mom's influence because she's an engineer. So she was like, oh, do biomedical engineering. But I was like, eh, okay, but I wasn't really interested in it. And then I found biomedical science which is more like laboratory-based biology. And I'm so happy with my choice. I definitely would not have, would change it for anything else. Um, so yeah, that's how kind of how I chose my major in my school. I, um, I was a little bit of a mess when I was doing college applications. Uh, looking back at that time, it's a little, oof you know, but you survive, survive. Um, when I was picking the schools to go to, at that point, I was like dead set on being like a doctor. And I'm probably still like pre-med, but at that time I was like, I'm gonna look into all of the seven year programs and, or like the eight year programs where it's all just like combined. And I found like, I literally just Googled like best eight year MD or BSMD programs or something like that. And I like almost applied to all of them, but then I ended up applying to the schools without applying to the specific like seven or eight year programs because I did not want to do them really. So sometimes it's a little bit of a journey to find out what you actually want in life. Um, I also tend to be like someone that does the most all the time. So I was like, oh, well, I'm also really interested in psychology, but I have to be pre-med. So like, if I wanna do psychology, I have to also do biology. So I'd probably have to double major in biology and psychology. And then I got like introduced to the field of neuroscience. And at first it was like a way to like study the brain and something I was more interested in within the realm of like medicine and stuff without being like, I don't know, upsetting my parents. Um, so I was like, oh yeah, I'm so pre-bed, but I'm also studying like psychology. They call neuroscience, like basically what taking a double major would be, but easier. Um, well, not easier, but like not as many classes. Um, and I was like, oh, this is like a compromise because it's something I like. And also my parents will be like happy and you know, it's all good. And then, of course, I ended up double majoring anyway because I fell in love with literature and now I'm an English and neuroscience major. So um, really for looking into like schools that have your major and stuff, it's not just important to have your major, but it's also like the programs and also like the environment of the school. I used to be dead set on like Hopkins, which I did apply to, but did not get in. But also I wasn't that excited about going to Hopkins because I interned there and my mentor said to me oh you know what's good about Hopkins we're like um number one in like patient care and whatever but our like the tenants of our priorities go research education and then helping people and I was like wow so you're bragging about how helping people is only your third value and you're the best in the country or something but like I don't know if I was going into medicine, I'd wanna put people first, you know? So look into like what schools like declare as their core values, because you also wanna go somewhere that like aligns with who you are as a person. That was a lot of words, I'm sorry. Yeah, I also find, you know, piggybacking off of Rishma is that I also find that research professors tend to be like not the best professors. <laughs> like. I, I'm a business major, but I know, like, I've heard complaints from other people that the research professors aren't really, like, really good co educators compared to, like, other professors, such as adjuncts and um, uh, associate professors and stuff. 
Yeah, okay. Oh, oh, sorry. And continuing on about choosing your college, the tuition and like the total fees also, you know, should make a big impact in your decision because I got into Temple University and it had a major I wanted, but it would have been like 50,000 a year and I didn't have that type of money, right? So, you know, it wouldn't work out in the end, even if I did get a scholarship. Yeah, I totally get what you're saying. Uh, thank you guys for that. Um, we have just a few more questions before we switch over to the students and their own questions. But our big one was, what do you guys think students should be asking when they visit college is during like tours or events? Is there certain things that you guys ask that would be beneficial by chance? How much you have to walk from class to class, especially when you're a uh, freshmen doing gen eds like in college park if you go from the armory to like taws or mckeldon you have to climb up you know the big um you know sidewalk across mckeldon mall or if you're going from uh regents park parking garage or you know something else near a stadium you have to go across like climb up stamp hill to get to stamp and stuff so like the walking is important Um, I would say ask if there's, it's like a blue light campus. Um, I've never used one of them, but it makes me feel safer knowing that there are those little like blue light poles for when you walk around at night and are terrified and want like help, I guess. I would say um, ask a current student, specifically your tour guide, like what's something that you wish you would have known before you chose this school? Because usually that will like, they'll usually switch off sometimes from tour guide and give you like the actual information that you need to know or like the actual stuff, like such as like reaching out to certain deans or reaching out to certain departments um, for like information and stuff, as well as like just important stuff when it comes to like dorming. Cause I know for like Morgan, when I asked them that, they were like, well, the dorms aren't that great. And I was like, mm, thank you. Like that, that's all I need to hear, just, you know. Um, I think another important detail is probably class size. Um, of course, you know, starting off in your freshman year, you'll probably be in a lot more lecture hall classes, but I think that's important to know and, uh, and whether or not your classes will be being taught by, um, uh, well, I, I guess that's actually uh, information that they'll probably put on a lot of brochures. Some colleges, but sometimes you might have to ask the ratio. And then also um, the resources you have available, especially if you're in a major where you really rely on those resources to, uh, to perform. Um, and then I also think if you're in any sort of creative major, uh, the amount of freedom you have as you uh, progress throughout your major, I think that uh, with film specifically, like some colleges are very, uh, have, tend to pigeonhole you and make you go into one specific path, but other colleges will be more willing to allow you to explore different facets of your industry. And I, so I think asking uh, questions about the classes you can take and the freedom you can have, and especially if you can talk to other students, that's really helpful. Yeah, okay, thank you guys. Um, our next question for you is, what made you choose the college you currently attend and uh, right after this, we're going to start going into the audience's questions. Um, in terms of the, oh, go ahead. Um, all right. I was really between three schools when I was making my choice. And one of them wasn't even an option because I was waitlisted and it was just me being unrealistic. But um, the two main schools are actually three, it was three schools now that I think about it. One of them was like Boston University, which was far away and prestigious. And they did offer me some, you know, um, but then the other was UMD and UMBC. And pretty early on, I, I cut Boston University off the list because um, I, I want to live my life and not have student debt for the rest of my life. So um, money 
be realistic guys and I know like um I really didn't want to go to UMBC because it's a lot smaller of a campus and also there's not as much to do from what I've heard even though they have better like science programs and they are better for pre-med and stuff I wanted to walk around and even though it's exhausting sometimes UMD is like gorgeous to walk around like even if I want to get from one residence building to another I'm gonna at least need a four minute walk it's not like literally attached you know so um I just like walking it's painful and my legs always hurt but it's good Uh, for me, I knew I wanted to go to an HBCU, so it came down to uh, Morehouse or Howard, um, both of which offered me money, and Howard is in D.C., while um, Morehouse is in Georgia, So, and Howard is a bigger school, while Morehouse is a smaller school, so at the time, I was like, well, you know, being away from home, as well as uh, being at a smaller institution, that might be fun, and I get to, like, um, you know, really interact with the people on campus and get to know them in a closer in a closer way. Um, so that's why I chose uh, Morehouse. Um, for me, I basically just chose the best school for my major. Um, and I was choosing between two schools, but one of them was in California. And at the time, like COVID was hitting really hard. So I, I chose Maryland, which was the closer one to home. Um, yeah, I chose mine um, for the cost because I was, I want to go to an HBC as well. Um, and I was stuck between Spelman, Morgan, and then like my other choice was Stevenson because they gave me a lot of money and offered me their honors program. Um, but Spelman's in Georgia, it's the sister school to Morehouse, um, and they just costed way too much and they didn't even have my major. And that was, although that was my dream school, I had to be practical with myself. Um, and then Morgan, they had like a 100% pass rate for nursing at the time, because that's what I enrolled as, um, as well as their alumni community is like really expansive. Like you can see it whenever we have homecoming, like people come out. Um, and then also allow me to stay like still active in my social justice work with like the NAACP and RE, like the other groups and stuff in Howard County. Um, Cause I didn't really want to like move away from that or like transition to like another city or state that I didn't know. Um, so yeah, and then the money, the money was right. The numbers matched and they give me a refund check. So, you know. Um, um, sorry. Sorry. Um, I chose my school um, because the money <laughs> one, and I went to live in London too, and I got a scholarship, which was great. And um, I narrowed it down again because I wanted to be in the city. So it was either um, living in Scotland or I also got into Spelman and, and Howard and Xavier, but I wasn't really feeling like the HBCU life, like it just didn't connect with me. And they didn't give me like not nearly enough money as what the tuition was. So it was an option. Um, so uh, yeah, it was, it's way cheaper. Um, I wanted to live in London and it was great. My school is great for biomedical science. So I kind of narrowed it down that way. Um, and yeah. Um, I think for me, uh, honestly, I, the school I ended up going to was my dream school from the beginning. Um, I think I was really reluctant to want to go there because I knew it was a bit, a bit hard. Oh. Um, a bit hard to get into, but, uh, um, when I visited there, I just knew that's where I'd want to be. I mean, I love the city. Um, I think New York is probably one of my favorite places. I already had family there. It was the best school for my major. Um, I just loved everything about it when I visited. And But what ended up doing it eventually was that they gave me the most money. And so I, 
it was just really nice that practicality and uh, sentimentality ended up lining up really nicely. Okay, yeah, thank you guys. Um, our next question for you, uh, when did you guys really end up choosing your major? So were you like interested in it early on or was that later on that you discovered it? Um, I kind of touched on this before, but literally when I was doing the drop down selection for like UMD, which is the first one I was doing when I was applying, I just saw neuroscience and impulsively selected it. And then for the rest of the colleges I applied to, I looked for it because I actually like looked into it after I applied to the University of Maryland. Um, but you know, it really was for me. So sometimes intuitively, you know what you want, even if consciously you lie to yourself. Um, and then I added my other major later on, which I never thought I would be an English major. Um, and here I am and I love it, but yeah, sometimes like don't stress too much um, about the specific major because that is definitely something you can also figure out after you get to school. I know a lot of people are like, I have a friend who applied as a bio major because she didn't want to apply undecided, but she really was undecided. And later she got to school and is now a psych and bio major, but that's because she's hesitant to drop the bio major, but she doesn't want to be a bio major. And the issue is if you do that and you're, um, if you like apply for a major you're not interested in for any other intention, even if it is like for the sake of your parents or whatever, which is a very real factor, um, you're gonna suffer for it. Like she's taking a whole bunch of chemistry classes and all the biology major requirements. And those are killer. They're very stressful and they're hard. And she's not gonna need them. Like she's ultimately going to drop the major. So don't be scared to not know. It's completely fine. College is the time to figure it out. Um, it's okay if you like waste a little bit of time at the beginning trying to like look into different fields and stuff. I know a lot of people say you should be like exploring that in high school. And Howard County is good about like giving you options to like pick your classes a little bit, but it's nothing compared to college. I would say, don't panic. It's okay to not know. You're literally like, I don't even entirely know and I'm decided on my majors, you know? Um, yeah. Um, hopping off of that, I always knew I wanted to be a business major, especially in high school. And also because I didn't like computer science, like I hated it. So I wanted to be like, you know, like I, I was going through a list, crossing things off. I didn't want to be a doctor. I didn't want to do bio. I didn't want to chem. I didn't want to do computer science and business was uh, what I landed on. So when I was applying to College Park, I applied as business undecided. So freshman year comes, I take a bunch of classes, some fun, some, you know, requirements for the business school. And, you know, going through the classes, I like got to an idea of what I wanted, which was like analytic stuff. So I decided to go like in a practical way, do information systems, which is like somewhat related to computer science, but not a whole lot. And uh, operations management and business analytics. Also in college, I decided on a minor because I, I took fun courses such as pollinators in crisis, which was my science, uh, anthropology courses, classic courses, and history courses. And, you know, taking multiple courses helped me decide my minor, which is history. Um, I also decided what I wanted to major in very early on because my sophomore year, I took my first computer science class and I just, I, I really liked it. So that's, um, and I actually, built my college application around that too. Um, and my, like the, the club activities, I also joined a bunch of clubs uh, related to that. And, um, and I'm very lucky that I still enjoy it um, today. So, yes. I think for me, I ended up, uh, 
Oh yeah. Um, sorry. Um, so I, I feel like for me, I really, uh, ended up figuring out by accident. I think I already had an inkling that I wanted to do something related to, uh, something artistic, but I really, film really wasn't in my radar, um, until I think it was my junior year, uh, for my English class, we had a, an assignment where basically we had to, I think it was our final or maybe our midterm. I can't remember. And we had to take one of the books that we read and, create some sort of creative expression based around a theme on that book and I ended up doing a short film and it was really bad um <laughs> I I watched it just the other day and uh oh Rushma told me it was the final um and the editing was horrible and it sound the sound quality was horrible but I had so much fun creating it um Judy was actually <laughs> the lead actress <laughs> Um, but it was really fun and I had so much fun. And I think that was the first time I was like, this is something I can do. I think this is something I really want to get better at. And from there, I kept on, uh, there aren't a ton of film things really in Howard County to do. There was a video production class I ended up doing my senior year. I also did some stuff over the summer and that really helped me figure out what I wanted to do. Uh, and just like sort of, uh, somewhat related, but in regarding my portfolio, I didn't have a film to submit because I was so new to it but I had my art portfolio because I didn't find arts for a long time. And so even if, you know, you don't have a ton of experience in a major, it's still something that you could explore. And as uh, several other people have said, it's okay to apply thinking you want to do one thing and then in college figure out you want to do something else. No, you have tons of time in your life to figure out what you want to do. So, yeah. Um, For me, I, I've, got my major because uh, since I was young, I always wanted to be a doctor and specifically a surgeon. So from there, I kind of built um, like my plan for how to become a surgeon. So for my major, like I said, I started with biology, but then I heard that, um, you know, biology was like the worst major to go into because there's only like a pre-med track and like if you don't do like medicine then like there's nothing to fall back on so then I kind of got like okay well let me not do biology so then I researched other um, biology type majors like microbiology and like what I'm now in now biomedical science and which is like research-based so it's like um, biochemistry like the people that are that are in the lab doing your COVID test, those are biomedical scientists. Like the people that are taking your blood samples and looking to see if you have like sickle cell or things like that, um, taking tissue samples, those are all biomedical scientists, like research-based science. So I found out um, from university that I really like doing research. So um, biomedical science kind of like solidified it. That was like a good choice for me. Um, also, um, I think in doing the shadowing when I was in high school, um, with the pediatric surgeon that also like solidified that I wanted to be a surgeon because I had that like type of experience. So I would say, find out what you're interested in, like if it's um, science or film or arts and try and get in contact with someone that's in um, that field, get some experience in it, shadow them and then figure out if you like that and then go in from there. Okay, yeah, thank you guys so much. Um, our next question is something about kind of college in general. So obviously it can be really stressful. So what's one way that you guys really found balance at college with like your social life, just the academics and everything else that there is? I would say the way I found balance is saying no. Like you have to learn to say no, take a nap, leave people alone. Like d, &D is the best friend to any college student because the second I put my phone on d, d and go down for a nap, nobody can touch me. If it's an emergency, call the police, call Obama, I don't know. Um, just don't call me for that time being because um, like people especially in college like I had this problem since I missed my first year due to COVID you know like just being online now that like I'm here I'm in like six clubs and I kind of hate it um, so now I'm like figuring out how to say no how to be like okay you can't text me at this time like I don't care if it's that important like it will be done tomorrow um, and then also making sure that you do have that self-care time and like you decompress with like your friends 
um, and like outreach. Cause like, there's a lot of other people that are going to be going through stuff, struggling, running across campus. Um, so as long as you like get to laugh about it or even just say like, oh no, I just need a break. Then that will help you out a lot. To just go off of what uh, Brooke just said, um, for me, I love joining various types of organizations, especially if I'm really passionate about what they're a part of or, or what they stand for. Um, and I also uh, like to take a lot of classes. So, and I also like to have a lot of friends. So you can see there's a really big recipe for complete disaster in terms of personal time. So I would say, high, um, how do I say it? College is definitely not like high school. An 8 a.m. in college is not the same as an 8 a.m. in high school at all. Um, joining six different organizations is not the same as joining six different organizations in high school. Um, having seven classes is 100% not the same as having seven classes um, in high school. So you got to realize that you still are human. You still need, as Brooklyn said, your own personal time. You need time to sleep. You need time to um, just kick back and say, okay, I'm going to watch something. Um, you know, it, it's just like, for me personally, I just realized that I have to really take, or I have to take heed of what I really care about. And so that means two organizations, um, the average or a little bit above average amount of classes, eight hours of sleep, 100% eight hours of sleep like a hundred percent and yeah piggybacking off of that take classes that start after 9 30 never at eight i skipped all of my 8 a.m's it was terrible so 9 30 classes are your best friend or 11 even later is better and never go past five because you'll also start skipping those I'm probably like one of the worst people to talk to about balance um, in general, but I think that make, gives me good perspective. Um, I started out like freshman year, fall semester, I took 16 credits and the minimum to be full-time is 12 and the maximum you can take is 17. And I suffered and I didn't do any clubs. It was like, COVID. It was, I was literally just doing school. I didn't hang out with people because I was like really isolating most of the time. And it was too much. And then spring semester, I took 17 credits. And that was also really unsustainable. I also accidentally joined a club and accidentally became president of that. So be careful um, for what you join because sometimes you're signing up for things that you don't even know. Um, I like being president now though, it's really chill. It's much easier than when I was a member. Um, but anyway, um, right now, like the commitments I have, like Julian said, I have two commitments, like other than school. Um, and I'm only taking, I only took 15 credits last fall and I'm only taking 13 next fall and that sounds crazy because I am double majoring and I am surrounded by people that are insane go-getters the same people I went to Centennial with a lot of them are similar people I'm going to school with and like the same like mentality of doing the absolute most all the time and needing to like compare how sleepless you are to show how well you're doing at school don't buy into it. Leave that behind. I say don't do it in high school either. Um, a good way to combat doing the absolute most all the time in college is to do it a little bit in high school. Um, my AP credits have allowed me the breathing room to take a chill semester of only 13 credits. And also, it seems really like not good friend to say this, but I flaked on so many people this year, um, social commitments, because it's hard and it's okay. Like a lot of people are very scared of making friends, like 
not making friends and of saying no to things. And I'm still really bad at it, but I do it a lot. And um, it's important that when you're giving your time that you're giving the best quality of your time that you can. And if you're saying yes to things at the expense of yourself, it's not a good idea. And I'd say that not just for finding balance academically, like I took an upper level English class and man, I did well in that class, but I was suffering and I was struggling. And you don't want to be doing that to yourself, you know, like there's a reason that college advisors say don't take more than two labs in a semester. They want you to do well in what you do take. Quantity is not as good as quality. Um, that was a lot, so. Also, don't forget to take easy courses every semester or like you'll burn yourself out. Like every semester, I've always had a fun course with a fun teacher that allows me to de-stress. Like one semester was about anthropology. The other was, you know, classical history about figuring out if like America is becoming another realm. One was about pollinators and uh, the crisis they're in. And another was about, you know, human, um, tracing human ancestry. It was my bioscience lab or my science lab. So it was really chill. I didn't have to worry about much. I just went, went to labs, but it wasn't like bio or bio, bio, biology labs or chemistry labs. I didn't touch any of those. You can always find the easiest lab possible if you're not a, you know, biochem, you know, STEM major. <laughs> um, oh no, go ahead, sorry. Um, for me, balancing uh, my academic life and my social life and my personal life was really hard because um, for my school, we, we don't get to take any gen ed, gen ed classes. Um, so I guess like, I think it's like a European thing or maybe a London thing, but we, you, once you decide your major, you take classes for that major. So it's a good thing because you're allowed to graduate in three years rather than four, but it's also kind of a bad thing because you don't get like to choose like an easy class, like, like how she was saying how she was taking like a really fun class. You don't really get that break. So it's easier to get burned out quickly, which was kind of what I was dealing with. So I'm a big advocate for creative outlets. I found that like drawing or like I recently took up piano. I have no idea how to play piano, but I just bought a keyboard because I'm just like, you know what, I'm just going to figure this out. Like, it's just like another way to de-stress and just get all by de-stress and also get creative. Um, because being a STEM major, I don't really get to be creative. It's just like you're in the lab from nine to five and then that's it. So yeah, like finding a creative outlet or multiple creative outlets to just de-stress and just, you know, be present in the moment and be creative was really helpful for me, for my mental health. Okay, yeah, thank you guys so much. Um, just to monitor time, uh, we are gonna have a quick question, but I want you guys to just raise your hand if you think it's important, put your hand down if you don't think it's important. Honors and GT classes um, versus AP classes, do you think AP classes really matter and should you take a lot or no, take more honors in general, like on grade classes? It depends. Okay, well, yeah, I get what you're saying, but I mean, like you can do like a halfway just to kind of get a feel for it. Uh, well, if you, if you don't mind me expounding on that. Yeah. Um, some colleges these days aren't really accepting a lot of APs depending on what type of AP they are. Um, so you have to go through the college list because the colleges publish a list of APs they accept and what APs they don't accept. So you should think about what APs you can take that help you get the college credits because if you take them and they're not helpful, what's the point? Yeah, I wanted to add on to that. Um, 
AP and dual enrollment is literally the thing that saved me um, like my freshman year, like, cause I hate math. One thing about me, I'm a hate math. Um, so I was like, I'm not gonna take math in college. Like I'm just gonna get it over with. So I took it at HCC, I did dual enrollment, which if you guys have the funds um, and have the transportation, dual enrollment is a lifesaver if you're going to a Maryland school or even if you're going like out of state. But I know for like the University of Maryland system, which includes like Morgan, it includes like UMD, UMBC, like those transfer immediately over. Um, that's really helpful. But like now I'm a sophomore, but I'm a first semester junior because I had credits from high school from AP and stuff. So I could technically graduate early if I want to, or just stay in my qualification. But I think it really helps um, because if you want to get basic stuff kind of out the way or see classes that you may like or may not like, it's a lot easier to do it at the high school level where you still kind of have that cushion. Um, and it's not like very make or break in college, like this is going to affect your long term plans, where it's like, oh, dang, I kind of suck at this class. Let me not take the AP exam or dang, like this dual enrollment is not that great. Let me just glaze over the fact and just not submit it to my college. So. It really, it personally really helped me because I didn't have to take math. So I was happy. Okay, I see what you guys are saying. Thank you for that. Um, we're gonna have maybe like two to three more questions. So I'm gonna try to get through these really quickly. Um, our next one is how much family support did you have while you were going through the college application process? And I guess we can add like finances in there as well. So like, did you get a lot of money and help with that? Okay, I see the hands. Um, does anyone want to elaborate on them? My parents were really supportive. Um, thanks to them, debt is not really in my future and I'm very privileged to say that. Um, and I'm very grateful to say that. Um, yeah. When it comes to like applying for colleges, I didn't have as much help from my parents but when it comes to paying for it. As Reshma said, I'm in a very privileged position to not have life crippling debt. So say that. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Um, thank you guys so much. Um, and then we have a few more questions. So our next one is, if any of you are in college, like on a scholarship, do you guys have any suggestions for anyone who's thinking about applying? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, y'all, this is my stuff. I was a scholarship advisor. Um, if y'all still need scholarship help, I'm gonna have them drop my email. Um, Cause I really like Julian, Ms. Grimes, no, I was knee deep in scholarship senior year, like every second I'll be applying, but um. I pay for my school entirely out of scholarships and out of my own pockets. Um, Morgan gave me a half ride, which for in-state people, that's not a lot. That's like six thousand, well, no, seven thousand dollars. Then the rest I get through like institutional aid. Um, but I would say for scholarships to pace yourself. I really like I had severe burnout from scholarships senior year. All my friends that were friends with me can like attest to it. Um, because it gets really kind of like it gets really sad when you don't win. I applied to over a hundred scholarships, only won like 12. So like my turnover rate was really, really small. And that used to like really mess with me. Um, so I would say really like kind of evaluate like the ones that you can win and lose. So if there's like the Coca-Cola scholarship, yeah, apply, but let's keep like the Howard County PTSA or let's keep your school's PTA one, um, you know, still at the front, you know, forefront because those are easier ones to win or look around at like the Howard County Foundation and different ones like that. In addition, um, don't be scared to like put yourself out there for scholarships. You may not know that you may win um, because that's what I did or like scholarships I didn't even apply for. I was applying to like fraternity and men's scholarships. Um, and while I wasn't a man or a part of the fraternity, they would still be like, here's some money just for like, you know, applying because nobody applied because there's a ton of scholarships that people don't apply to. Um, in addition, really keep scholarships organized um, and try to use your college essays and college application like essays to apply to them because that's what helped me. So I didn't have to rewrite everything. I could just grab one, paste it because they all ask pretty much the same questions. Okay, I yeah, know. thank you so much. Oh no, go ahead, go ahead. 
I was just going to say, um, I think that thinking about scholarships is also going great, going back to one of the questions I was asked earlier about figuring out which colleges to apply to. I think it's a good idea to only apply to colleges that either are within your price range or you know have strong financial financial aid systems. I know for my school, I was initially discouraged because I heard there were no merit scholarships, but then after investigating further by asking financial aid and prior students, I found that it's not that they don't consider merit, it's that they consider need and merit. And I ended up uh, getting a full ride scholarship in addition to the other independent scholarships I applied to. Uh, and so definitely doing your research would really help. Okay, yeah, thank you so much. Um, our next question is going to be, what are some benefits or some drawbacks of living on campus versus commuting to like college every day? Um, if you live on campus, well, I've had to like, you pay more money cause you know, you live on campus, like versus like I pay 7,000 because I'm commuting this year. So I pay 7,000 in like per semester for tuition. But if I lived on campus, it was like 22,000 overall over the year. It was more expensive for me. So it was like in terms of financial like matters, it was better for me to commute rather than live on campus. And plus, you know, COVID, it was more, you know, safer too. Um, I think in um, cities, oh, sorry. No. Um, I was just going to say, I think in cities, a huge factor is safety, um, especially in New York City. I think it's really alluring to want to get an apartment just because you can save a little bit of money doing that instead of uh, paying for dorming. But uh, a lot of dorms in city colleges will have security and, and guards and a lot of those types of resources. And a lot of the apartments, you know, dormant apartments are very expensive. And so you'll probably end up having, you know, an apartment where it's pretty easy to break into, uh, well, not break into, uh, for strangers to get into the apartment. And so uh, I definitely say, even though, you know, having independence and saving a little bit of money is nice, if you can worry about your safety, that's really definitely a good idea. Yeah, for me, uh, my first two years, I lived on campus. And then my final year this year, I'm living in a shared flat with me and my two friends. So yeah, like how she was saying, there's there's pros with living on campus because you have the security of being safe with security and the fact that it's, you know, in most cases gated, like a gated um, campus. Um, in addition to safety, there's also campus life. So when you leave campus, like, and you wanna live by yourself, um, you kind of miss out on all like the university like on campus life um, because you're not there, you're not living there. So there's pros because, you know, you're with your friends or you're by yourself and you kind of have like, um, you're kind of just not on campus, which is good and bad, but I don't know. There's pros and cons to it. It just depends on like your campus life and money. If that's like able, like if you're able to do that financially. Okay, yeah, thank you guys. Um, we have just a few more minutes. So I guess really quickly, how do you guys decide what college to put down as your early decision school? I didn't do any early decision schools. I only did early action because I felt like early decision was too much of a commitment for me. I wanted options. Um, same, especially because a major factor is finance. Um, I know a few people that did early decision, like without their parents knowing, and it like has not been good for their entire family's financial situation. So, um, yeah, I'm not one of the risk takers that would do that. Um, but if you are, it should be like your absolute dream school, something that is worth it, you know, like something that even if you got a full ride scholarship to your second choice, you would still rather go to that first choice. And I don't have the kind of uh, 
security in my choices or in my desires and how long they last to be able to make that kind of commitment. But if you do, props to you. Um, good luck. Um, I was gonna add, I would highly, especially as like a scholarship advisor, um, I would highly um, caution against doing a lot of early decision um, because those contracts like with binding, uh, they're binding and they get like to be really crazy if you do want to drop out of them. And I know, especially for like more prestigious schools, like they really will hold you tooth and nail to that agreement where you could possibly get blacklisted because, you know, college is tough. Um, but I did apply to early action for, I think it was like a couple Ivy Leagues. Um, and that's just because I wanted to see like my chances, but I would say really only apply early action to schools that have been in your mind for a while. Um, that you don't want to miss out on their financial aid. Um, in addition, I think that's good to apply to like two or three because then later on you can contest your financial aid at other schools that are regular decision um, with an appeals form so that you can be like, well, they gave me this money. So you need to give me this money because it will usually end up working. Also, um, oh no, never mind. No, 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 go for it. Yeah. Um, also with like early action, I definitely would say for like mostly do it for the colleges that are strong contenders like um I did it for my number one safety school my number one like reach school and my number one my level school I don't remember what that's called anymore attainable whatever it is um and also a couple more but like I didn't end up applying more than that because I was burned out senior year um, but like definitely have some confidence in the likelihood of you going to those schools when you apply early. Okay, yeah, thank you. Um, and then really quickly, this is our last minute. So um, just by a show of hands, how many classes do you guys think, or let's have like a hand up, hand down kind of situation. How many classes or credits should you take a semester? Um, hand up for less than 15 or wait no what's the limit it's like 14 12 right 12 to 16. okay right at the limit does anyone think that you should be right there nope okay how about like two to three over the limit kind of in the middle okay so nobody thinks you should go towards the end right just like a nod okay all right okay that's great like you will be so no You'll okay. All right. And then I took take 18 it. classes or 18 credits. It was it was killer. It was definitely mm -hmm. killer. A it's lot of one, two, three, like I think I had four classes in a day one time. Like it's crazy. If you have to get permission from your counselor to have the course load that you're taking, really think about why an adult has to okay you trying to hurt like hurt yourself essentially with school. Like think about that, you know. Anyway. Okay. And also, yeah. I, oh, sorry. And I, I know a lot of people tend not to go to their college advisors for, you know, choosing your next semester's classes, especially when you're in college. You should go meet up with your advisors, your college advisors. They have good advice because they've seen students, you know, fail and not fail, but not do well in the courses they're taking. They'll have some advice for you. Okay, yeah, thank you guys so much. Um, it's 830. So I don't want to keep you guys longer. But thank you so much for being here. And um, obviously, everything that you provided is really insightful. Um, I'm going to hand the mic off to Grimes. Yeah, go ahead. I just want to jump in quickly before everyone leaves. Um, there was a question in the chat. I know that we didn't get a chance to get to all the questions. And I am so terribly sorry to the audience members. But I think all the information that our panelists share was so valuable. Um, someone asked a question about your thoughts on sports scholarships. Um, is there anyone here who received a sports scholarship or someone who may have some thoughts on sports scholarships as we wrap up?
I've never received a sports scholarship, nor am I involved in the process, but I do tutor uh, the sports students. But I know that in order to maintain your sports scholarship, you have to have at least a 2.0 GPA, um, but that's it for me. And they'll have support for you if you're not really doing well and or need help in your subjects and stuff in your courses and stuff, yeah. I do know for Brooklyn, the scholarship queen, go ahead, you got that. That's <laughs> Sorry, I was about to add really quickly as an advisor, because I've advised students with sports scholarships um, that they're good, but I would always say to have that fail safe plan, like that plan B stashed away, because while they are very contingent on sometimes how well you do, you also have to look at the fine print for your school to see what are their drop sanctions to see like what they can drop you for. Um, not only just grades, but also sometimes it could be like for performance or like I say, like that the coach has mercy over your scholarship and you don't want to be stuck um, like the next semester. And you're still trying to continue, but you don't like you don't have a scholarship. So always still try at least get a merit scholarship in addition or just have the money saved up just in case. Um, as we lead out, I am going to jump in on that one. Um, from someone who worked in a high school in the guidance office um, with a lot of students, I can tell you that I probably know more students who received um, a large amount of aid from college for academics than for sports. And um, when I first started working in high school, that was a surprise to me. I think I'd heard so much about sports scholarships that I thought that was um, something that was pretty common and um, pretty lucrative for students. And I'm not saying that students don't receive sports scholarships, obviously they do. Um, but I think that a lot of families would be surprised at how much money students can get for strong academic performance. And, and I don't mean just students who have absolutely straight A's either. So um, I would definitely tell you to focus on your academics. Um, we're gonna wrap it up because like Shreya said, it is now 834. So I've kept some of you over. Um, I wanna thank all of the panelists. Thank you so much for your time. I know that you guys are either back or about to go back and you have a lot of going on. So I really wanna thank you for the time that you shared tonight and the wisdom you shared. I wanna thank Shreya, you were an amazing moderator. Thank you, you really represented our tab group so incredibly well. And then I wanna thank Ms. Carmen Jessup, the um, teens instructor at East Columbia. Thank you so much for agreeing to be our producer and making sure that we kind of ran everything really nicely behind the scenes. And of course, I wanna thank all of the audience members who are still with us. Thank you so much for attending. I hope you really got a lot out of this. Um, feel free, I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to complete our, um, a, uh, a audience feedback, but I did drop my email address in the chat box. I always love hearing from the public and from those who um, attend these events. So if you wanna email me, give me your impressions, any suggestions you may have for next time, I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great night. And I hope to see you soon at the Miller Library.